Hey, this is Ian from EssentialTennis.com. Welcome to this video in which I'm going to be talking about what grip is best for creating topspin. And this question really came to us from Max Diamond, uh, who wrote to me and, and comments uh, below uh, another video and said, what is not clear to me is how the grip affects topspin. Moving the hand more to the right is supposed to add topspin, but how does this work since the racket must be basically perpendicular to the courts on contact? It seems that racket head speed would be the main contributor. Thanks. All right, well, Max, this, this kind of starts heading into a very common misconception and something that I really feel is important to, to address. And that is just kind of the basic thought or idea that what grip, what grip we have creates topspin. I, I've kind of, I've heard that basic um, attitude or feeling over and over again. Oh, if you, if you want a topspin, just, just go with a full Western grip. You'll automatically have topspin. And that's completely, completely untrue. Moving your hand more towards Western does not automatically give you topspin. And Max is absolutely correct. Regardless of what grip you have, at contact, your racket face should be, you know, within a couple of degrees right around perpendicular to the court surface. So I think what a lot of people think is that as I move, you know, right, here's a, a continental grip with my right hand. I think what a lot of people think is, okay, so if I just move my grip to Eastern, all right, look, now my, my racket face is more closed, so I'll be able to hit over the top of the ball more and make more topspin, right? Well, I've already done a, a completely separate video on how over the top, that the phrase, that kind of catchphrase or cliche of over the top does not create topspin. So when you go to a semi-Western or, or a full Western grip and players are thinking, oh great, now my racket's really closed, I'm gonna make a lot of topspin. It doesn't work that way. Topspin is created from the racket motion, the racket as a whole, moving vertically past contact point. So the ball doesn't care what grip you have, you know, continental, eastern, semi-western, whatever. If the racket is not moving upwards at contact, you will not make topspin. So what does switching the grip matter then? Well, look, when I have a, a continental grip and I open my hand, my hand is more or less right behind the racket face, right? That's how they tell us how to find a continental grip, right? Is put your palm on the strings, slide your hand down, and that's a, a continental grip. Well, if my hand is directly behind the racket face, it just kind of seems to make sense that that would be most natural, a mo the, the most natural thing to do with my hand in that position would be to drive forwards, right? Through the ball. Well, if I leave my racket perpendicular and I go to semi-western, which is right here, and I open my hand up. Look at my hand now. It's facing up towards the sky. So what this does is it makes it more natural to swing vertically. It's placed my palm underneath the racket handle and therefore underneath the strings, which are perpendicular to the court surface. And now I can start to create a lot more leverage and really kind of um, transfer a lot more force in a vertical direction. And that's where you start to see players, you know, with a, a windshield wiper type follow through and that sort of thing. It's much, much more natural to do that with your hand underneath the racket instead of behind the racket. This is really where the, uh, where things converge as far as the relationship between topspin and grip. It's not that the racket face closes more and so, oh, I can come over the top of the ball. That is completely false. The benefit to changing your grip more towards the bottom is that it puts your, puts your hand more under the racket, which allows you to then swing vertically more naturally. So Max, hopefully that makes sense. If you're watching on YouTube right now, hopefully that makes sense to you as well. If you have any comments or questions about anything I just talked about, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, do me a favor and click like and also subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so that you don't miss out on any future lessons. With that, thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate your time and your attention, and I'll be talking to you again very soon.